Tribalism is a state of being organized by or advocating for tribal or tribal lifestyles. And human evolution has primarily occurred in small groups of people as opposed to mass societies. And in a lot of ways we might look at tribes as being the most natural state of being for the human condition. And there will be some arguments about that. In popular culture now, tribalism may refer to a way of thinking or behaving uh, in people which are loyal to their social groups above all other things. And there's been some vilification of tribes and we'll talk about that as well. But the word tribe can be defined to mean an, an extended kin group or clan with common ancestors or it also can be defined as a group with shared interests, shared lifestyles and habits. And we see that tendency for humans who are extremely social beings to want to stick together with beings who think just like them, with other humans who think just like them. That's very normal. Tribalism in its purest form was a gift that evolution gave early man to ensure the survival of humans on the planet. And a lot of our, our very most instinctual behaviors are rooted to our survival or the survival of humans Overall, th this is what drives nature. This is why nature gives us these gifts. And this was extremely important, not only for socialization, but also for protection. We needed each other. And this is what, what, this is what socialization, this is what tribalism ultimately is all about. And we know from, from multiple studies that humans have a preference for genetic proximity. So we like to be close to people who look like ourselves and think like ourselves. The concept of tribalism is in simple terms, meaning that I am bonded or connected to people who are genetically attached to, to me. And that's how we'll define our early interpretations of tribalisms. Although we have to recognize that there are other forms of human bonds that are have nothing to do with blood or genetics that are just as strong. But in this instance, we're going to look at the purity of tribalisms as we first experienced it. And what it did is it made me look at my brother's kids and say, okay, I'm, I like them. I'm going to protect them. The emotional connection that I had to my brother, I pass along to his children and it goes further and further out. And as we go past probably sixth cousins, those, those bonds start to weaken to the point that that may not necessarily be contribute considered a part of my personal tribe, but we all understand how that mechanism works. And we see in other humans that it's almost natural that we exist in smaller groups, be it gaggles of geese, or herds of buffalo, or pods of killer whales. It seems like biology places in smaller niche groups around the planet. And most of our mythology is ultimately born from smaller tribes that spread out. Unfortunately, the concept of tribes is that they're ultimately taken over by larger civilizations and ultimately as we see the nation state that exists now. And while there are still very well-defined tribes on the planet, their sovereignty is constantly being tested by what we would call modern civilization, particularly the nation state. And ultimately, we all believe that the nation state will completely wipe out the remaining vestiges of tribalisms and that will ultimately lead us to the next stage which will be true globalism. Now we do concentrate oftentimes in modern society about the negatives of what tribalism is and that's because tribalism produces behavior that is not designed to fit in a nationalist system. That is truly what the concept is. So when we see behavior from humans that we don't like it's because our natural state is to exist in smaller groups. We're being forced into larger groups based on nations, sometimes forced into taxation. Sometimes this takes on uh, indoctrinated education. Sometimes this takes on cultural warfare. And so we see the, the, the downside both of tribalism, but particularly when we see tribalism within the context of nationalism, it's not designed to function in that. It's, it's like being a communist in a capitalist civilization or being a capitalist in a communist civilization. It is at odds. There's nothing inherently bad about either concept. Most peoples on the world existed in some form of a tribe or a clan. We see it throughout Africa. We see it in the Middle East. We see it in Europe. We see it in, in what we call the Americas now. And even ultimately the smaller groups, if we look at all of our mythology, comes from clan. When we look at 
Abrahamic belief systems, we're ultimately talking about small clans of people, the, the various tribes that left uh, the Middle East carrying forth the message of their God. Uh, we also see it throughout the Middle East that the tribe was the very much the natural state of most humans and most of their mythologies come from that. We can see it throughout throughout most, most parts of the world. And we do understand that the beginning of some of the greatest empires in the world were ultimately tribes that grew. The Roman Empire started from a tribe that grew in size and began through mechanisms of war and the spread of their culture to dominate and ultimately consume other cultures that were around them. And that's almost one of the purest battles that mankind faces. We don't have to look far, but to look at the Mel, very popular Mel Gibson film Braveheart, which was ultimately the idea of these particular small clans who had governed themselves and had relative amounts of war and peace amongst each other, ultimately being uh, having their complete island taken over by what would be ultimately the British Empire, right? The very early stages of it. So this is the uh, the fight, and you know we see it in the Western expansion here in the United States as as the West was wide open. You had people who were considered mountain people who were brought under the control of uh, the governing states. Again, this was a wild land that well was a civilized land in some respects, but in their view, it was a wild land that was ultimately being civilized or tamed. So we have to ask ourselves when we look at at the concept of tribalism and understanding what tribalism was. The gift that evolution gave us, it allowed humans to bond together at a time when we needed to stick together. Whether tribalism should exist in the day and age, whether tribalism should die under the concept of nationalism, or whether tri tribalism should arise again it is unknown. But we do this and how humans choose to use their traits or evolve past them or with them remains to be seen. Thank you for joining us here at Nine World Chronicles as we'll talk a little bit more about some other evolutionary traits that we pass along, one being the idea of belief or non-belief that we would see reflected in atheism. Thank you again. You can stop by our website, NineWorldChronicles.com, for more information about the topics that we discuss.